Greetings, dear brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Once again, to Him and Him alone be all the praise, honor, and glory. And today is the 29th day of the fifth month of the year, 2017. And today, dear brothers and sisters, I'm here to talk about what the Lord wants me to share and insight about how to finish this race strong in these last of the last of the last moments. We all can feel, dear brothers and sisters, that in these last of the last, we are in the last of the last of the last hours. We all can feel that in our spirit, we all are waiting for the heavens to open up. We all are waiting for our Messiah to call each one of us, come up hither. Dear brothers and sisters, as we are waiting, the Holy Spirit is leading us that we all can experience also the exponential increase of the attack of the enemy. And that's what the Lord is leading me to talk about regarding how to finish this race strong in these last hours. So dear brothers and sisters, we encourage you definitely to please do hear me out. And please, as you hear us, hear me out, please do ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to this message, whatever the Lord has for you, ask Him to lead you to that. Because this is the time the, we are in the end moments. We want to hold on to our Lord stronger than ever. And before we begin, dear brothers and sisters, once again, we would like to thank all of you for all your inputs and comments and, and the suggestions which you are giving regarding yesterday, the video we put up for Anna's Hebrew visions. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters. We did not get a chance to yet write down everything and put together everything to see what what exactly things are uh, things look like we we will sit together as a family like anna my wife and david we'll all sit together we would like to do that but we thank you for every single input every single comment we definitely appreciate that we hope that we can get what the lord is trying to tell us we hope that with the help of you all how we can definitely get together what the lord is trying to Tell us, is it about Israel or the Jews or us? We will hopefully get more inputs and we will keep you posted on that. And also, dear brothers and sisters, for whoever has asked for prayers, whoever has emailed us or whoever has asked for prayers, for sorry, we couldn't get to your emails, but we are definitely praying for each and every, every person who has asked for prayer. Dear brothers and sisters, we are praying that may the Lord strengthen and empower you so that his mighty will be accomplished through every single cells of your body and we once again plead philippians chapter 1 verses 9 through 11 on every single of our dear viewers and every single people who have asked for prayers so we will definitely keep praying for you and if you have any prayer requests please don't hesitate please do leave us please do don't hesitate i think the the link will be there for, or you can actually put in the comment box uh, if you need prayer. And we will definitely pray over every single who, every single person who is asking for prayer. And also the, our dear Berians, sorry we couldn't put up the Bible study for our sessions 23 and 24. We are still struggling with the time and we ask that please do pray for us. Please do pray for our strength so that we can get to the session 23 and 24. We hope to get to that as soon as possible and so let's get back to this so before we start so before we talk any further about what the lord is leading me to talk so let's just ask for the presence of the lord to guide us to guide me and to guide you as well so let us pray heavenly father we come this day in your presence in the name above every single name of our king yeshua hamashiach and i pray lord as i am about to convey your message to your appointed people about how to finish this Raise strong in these end of the end of the end moments. Please do enlighten, Heavenly Father, all of our hearts and minds with your Holy Spirit. And please be my strength when I am weak. I claim on Psalms 141 verse 3 and pray, Father, please do set a guard over my mouth and keep watch over the door of my lips as I convey your message to your appointed people. In the name above every single name of my King Yeshua HaMashiach. Using our authority of Luke 10, 19, we right this moment bind every single evil of the enemy, every single darkness which is coming at this time, which is coming at our dear viewers and pray for the hedge of protection for each one of us. 
And I pray for each and every viewer that may the Lord guide you through His Holy Spirit and help you to receive this message from our coming King, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in whose holy, mighty name we do pray. Amen and amen and amen. All right, so, brothers and sisters, what the Lord has been leading me to talk about that, as I was telling, I'm sure that we all can feel in the Spirit, we, our brethren, different brethren, are putting up videos about the messages the Lord is giving and we can feel in the spirit the extreme extreme imminency of our King Yeshua HaMashiach's return we can know that we are moments away from being caught up from where Jesus himself will call up call you call me come up hither come up hither but till that moment dear brothers and sisters as we see that hour approaching so is the imminency is exponentially increasing for the attack of the enemy and i'm sure it's not only us it's not only me i'm talking to somebody out there we are attacked from all sides the world our flesh and the devil himself our own family members perhaps are mocking over us hating us trying to condemn us and isolating us the enemy the devil is attacking us and trying to persecute us in several ways with different magnitudes, of course, as well as our own flesh is failing us by fall, by making us fall for the traps of doubt, denial, deceit, and lies of the enemy. Dear brothers and sisters, that's what exactly our King, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, was trying to warn us in the upper room discourse in John chapter 14 through 16. We see in John chapter 15, verses 18 through 19, this is Jesus himself talking. Jesus is telling that if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. That's Jesus himself telling. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So dear brothers and sisters, if you are today struggling with the hatred and everything what is going around, our Messiah himself told us that we will be hated. Of course, it's painful. But the flip side of that is that he has chosen. He says, yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you. He says, Messiah is telling that Messiah chose us. That's why we are being hated. And that's a privilege, dear brothers and sisters. But of course, in our flesh today, as we see, dear brothers and sisters, today we can feel that hatred, it is resonating and manifesting all around us. And the truth is that there are times when we do get entrapped in it, when we react, try to react to those hatred through our flesh. And dear brothers and sisters, as we know that we are in the last moments before Yeshua opens up, the heaven for his own. Likewise, the enemy knows as well that his time is extremely short. And he will try every single thing to whatever is possible for him to deceive us. To create doubts in our minds as well as manifest the evil spirit of denial. So dear brothers and sisters, today the Holy Spirit, what the Lord has been leading me to talk about is a streamlined plan of action to fight this battle in these last moments. In these last of the last moments, we don't want to indulge in things which are not in God's will. We don't want to react to evil. We don't give. Paul tells us in the book of Romans that we don't never over, get overcome by evil, but overcome evil by good. In these last moments, so the Lord has been leading me to, for the streamlined plan, he was leading me to, Romans chapter 4 verses 18 through 21 so you can I will be using the New King James Version you can open your own Bible or follow along it's Romans chapter 4 verses 18 through 21 who contrary to hope we are talking about Paul is talking about Abraham here who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of ma many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead 
since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to perform. That's Paul talking about Abraham. Dear brothers and sisters, the battle we are fighting, this battle we are in can only be fought with our faith, our strong, strong faith. The shield of faith, as we know, is an important piece in our spiritual armor. And it is a very strong defensive weapon. Dear brothers and sisters, today, yes, today we want to close all the holes in our shield of faith to stand in this battle and defend ourselves. Through the shield of faith and not through our flesh. And that's what we'll take a quick look at how to implement and thus execute this phenomenon. So in Romans chapter 4 verses 18 through 21 as we read, Paul tells us that Abraham was strengthened in faith and thus urges us to walk in Abraham's footsteps. To believe like he believed. But how do we do this? Paul is telling us to get strengthened in faith. And that's what the Lord is leading us today to be in these end of the end moments to strengthen our faith to finish this race, race strong. But how do we do this? As we saw, dear brothers and sisters, as we read in Romans chapter 4 verses 18 through 21. How do we strengthen our faith? How do we grow strong in our faith to fight the enemy in these last moments? And today we'll talk about two key factors which we get out of those scriptures. The key to it is as Abraham did, dear brothers and sisters. The point number one is look onto and hold onto God's promises and not our circumstances. I repeat, look onto and hold onto God's promises and not our circumstances. We don't react to what people are telling us or what the enemy is doing us. But we look, hold on to God's promises. In verse 18 it says, Who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations. Dear brothers and sisters, from the scripture we do get to know that Abraham's situation lo looked bleak. If we, you are today in the valley, so was Abraham. God promised him multitudes of descendants. But the only problem was he was well past child producing age. As Romans chapter 4 verse 19 says. And I'm paraphrasing it. That his body was as good as dead. As he was about a hundred years old. Abraham also cons considered the barrenness of Sarah his wife's womb. Not only was Abraham 100 years old, but Sarah, his wife, was very old as well. And she had never been able to have children her whole life. And given this scenario, and under these circumstances, how would we react? Anybody, anybody will react. Anybody will tend to think, how are they going to have children? That's the truth, dear brothers and sisters. If Abraham had based his hope on his circumstances, he would have given up. He would have given up long time back. But in hope he believed against every hope. God's promise gave him hope in his hopeless situation. He put his hope in God's promise and not his circumstances. Dear brothers and sisters, we may hope we may hopelessly we may be hopelessly unrighteous. We may feel like God could never forgive us for the sins we have committed. That he would never accept us. We may feel that rapture is not very imminent. We may, as the enemy is trying to bombard his fiery darts of lies, we may feel that rapture may not happen after a certain date goes up. We may watch a bunch of YouTube videos and come to our own conclusions and finally feel like defeated. That well, the rapture is still not happening. But that's not the truth. That's the truth of the enemy, which is the enemy wants us to believe. That is why, like Abraham, we should not trust our flesh or our circumstances or what we are seeing. But like Abraham, we must believe in God's promise of grace. He counts me righteous in Christ. We should trust in Yeshua HaMashiach's promise of the upper room discourse as said in John chapter 14 in the opening verses. That Yeshua is preparing a place for us in his father's house and his return is extremely imminent. 
Our circumstances, our situations, our thoughts doesn't define us. But God's promises define us. Our teenager may seem hopelessly lost. Our finances may be out of control. We may lack directions for our lives. Our marriages could be hard. Our friends and families may not like us. And overall, everything might look like a big mess. But look at Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach. Don't look to yourself. Look to the promises laid out in the gospel. Everyone who believes in him with all his heart shall be saved. Look to his promises to draw near to him. Promises to hear and answer our prayers. That's what God promises us. And the second point today I would like to give you what the Lord is telling is which the Lord wants me to emphasize on is to strengthen our faith and finish this race strong. How to do it is found in Romans chapter 4 verses 2, 20 and 21. And the second point is give glory to God. As we see in verses 20 and 21 says, He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. He is Abraham we are talking about. But was strengthened in faith giving glory to God. And being fully convinced that what he, that is what God had promised. He, that is God, was able to perform. That's where the strength comes from, dear brothers and sisters. Abraham was Abraham strengthened his faith. Here's how. As Romans chapter 4 verse 20 tells us. That he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. Does that sound irrational or not very logical? Our flesh, our, excuse me, our flesh might convince us like that. But no, dear brothers and sisters, that's what the enemy wants us to believe. Begin to give glory to God. Start thanking and praising him for his every promise. Thank him for saving you. And declaring you righteous in him. He has promised to be with us when we pass through the waters. Walk through the fire. He has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. He has promised that nothing will be able to separate us from his love. He has promised us to give us everything we truly need to glorify him. He has promised that we can do all things which he requires out of us through Christ who loves us unconditionally. Dear brothers and sisters. Let's just praise him for all these things which I just mentioned. We can look to our circumstances. It may not look like God is being faithful. It may not feel like God is with us in these waters. It may, not, it may feel like Jesus has abandoned or forsaken us. We may not sense his love. But here's the most important point. Here's the take home message for today. We must not waver concerning the promise of God. Abraham did not as Romans 4.20 tells us. Rather, we grow strong in our faith as we give glory to God. We are fully convinced that God is able to do what he had promised. In Psalms 43, the psalmist says, in Psalms 43 verse 5, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. Dear brothers and sisters, let us keep thanking God. Keep praising Him faith in the midst of our hard times. We are, while we are attacked by this world, by the devil, as well as our flesh. Let us keep saying, let us keep saying this. Jesus, thank you that you are with me. Thank you that you have promised that your steadfast love never ceases. I praise you that your mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Dear brothers and sisters, in these end of the end of the end of the end moments, before Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, descends for his own, we can and will be attacked through this world, through the enemy, and through our flesh. And that's where today the Holy Spirit is pointing us towards our faith. To strengthen our faith in these end moments as the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Dear brothers and sisters, we can only finish strong when we strengthen our faith. And grow strong, growing stronger in our faith is not complicated at all. As the Lord, has, as the Holy Spirit laid out today, it is just two steps. Hold on, look to God's promises, not your circumstances, not your situations. And glorify Him no matter what. And that will strengthen your faith because the same thing 
happened to Abraham. Same thing Abraham did. So choice is ours today, dear brothers and sisters. What are we going to believe today? God's inherent word or our circumstances? God's divine promises or our feelings? God's bedrock pledge of faithfulness or our wavering emotions? Let us today choose to walk in the footsteps of Abraham and strengthen our faith and finish this race strong so that on that day, which is moments away, our master can commend us and tell, well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, for viewing us. And we hope that the Spirit of God will guide each one of us through this message and help each one of us once again to grow stronger in faith and finish this race strong. Dear brothers and sisters, once again, we do recommend you to please take this message to the Lord and whatever the Lord lays on your heart, if you would please get back to us with all your inputs, thoughts, suggestions. We'll greatly appreciate that. So let's end with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for giving me this opportunity to be your servant. I pray, Father, that you may help each one of us to get ready for our King Yeshua HaMashiach's extremely, extremely, extremely imminent return. Father, we hold on to Luke chapter 21, verse 36 and pray that may we be found worthy of our Messiah. We pray, Father, in the name of our Redeemer, Yeshua HaMashiach, that may you bless all our dear brothers and sisters viewing this message right this moment and please enlighten their hearts and minds through your Holy Spirit so that they can discern and hold on to the truth because Jesus Christ, our Messiah himself, said that ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free in John 8, 32. More importantly, Father, please help us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Heavenly Father, may the meditations of our hearts and the words of our mouths be acceptable in your sight at this time. All this we pray in the holy, mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, and God bless you all.